and welcome back to the Arcane Forge. My name's Josh, and also welcome back to Dragon December, an annual tradition on this channel where I talk about the lore and mythology, combat habits, and everything else I can think of about dragons for an entire month because I'm hugely excited about A, dragons, and, you know, Christmas. So I have boundless enthusiasm for, well, pretty much everything this month, and I thought I would channel that, all of that energy, into a month about dragons. This is our second year of doing this, and while you may think, how on earth are there enough dragons to cover multiple years of doing two videos a week, just in case you guys didn't know, there are two videos every week, one on Monday, one on Friday. Hopefully there should be a helpful calendar on screen right now to show what videos we have coming up, just in case you are liable to miss out on any. But there are so many dragons in Dungeons & Dragons that there will be many, many years to come, and in fact, there are far too many for me to choose. So I like to use your suggestions for monsters that you would like to see, both when I'm doing my Monster Mondays or if you have a particular draconic favourite you want to come up in a Dragon December specifically, then you can absolutely leave that for me down in the comment section below. Just like DM and Torres did for today's topic, DM and Torres was the first person to suggest dragon turtles as a topic, a massively popular topic thanks to Critical Role, and also because dragon turtles are just amazing. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video talking all about those scourges of the deep, those massive armoured dragon beasts that dwell below the waves, dragon turtles. Dragon turtles in D&D, just as the name suggests, are a hybrid species who owe their power, long lives, intelligence and size to their draconic blood, but resemble enormous sea turtles. In D&D, there are a plethora of creatures who can call themselves dragons of some kind or another, thanks to their draconic blood. But generally, draconologists and curious wizards and scholars across the plains categorise dragons into two main groups, true dragons and lesser dragons. Those who fall under the category of true dragons are your typical chromatic, metallic and gemstone dragons, among some other more obscure forms, which are hotly debated among both in-game scholars and real-world fans alike. Whereas those considered lesser dragons are typically creatures who definitely carry draconic blood and some kind of draconic appearance, but who do not typically improve in strength, size, or power as they age. According to 3rd edition's D&D, dragons are classified as a type of creature simply defined as a reptile, or reptile-like creature, usually winged with magical or unusual abilities. We're also told that lesser dragons do not improve in age categories and may lack all of the abilities of true dragons. Alongside creatures like wyverns, fell drakes, elemental drakes, worms, lindworms, and many others, it's in this category of lesser dragons, despite their enormous size, that dragon turtles find themselves. Since their initial release in 1974's Dungeons & Dragons Volume 2, Monsters and Treasure, the appearance of these creatures has varied wildly. Whereas the stunning illustration in 5th edition depicts this creature as very visibly similar to a massive snapping turtle about to crush a sailing ship, earlier editions have focused more on the dragon-like elements of, the, of their namesake, giving them longer necks and tails, and even, as I choose to do here, giving them an extra set of limbs to account for the disappearance or vestigiality of their former wings. Most dragons are six-limbed creatures, after all, whether they are winged or otherwise, and this might result in some interesting webbing features to aid in swimming along the joints of their former arms, which have now become fins. One of the features that I'm keen to add to my interpretation of the dragon turtle is to pay some kind of homage to their roots in Chinese mythology, a stylistic choice which was very prominent in first edition's illustration. In Chinese mythology, the Longui has particular spiritual significance because it's a mixture of features combined between dragons and turtles, which are two of the Si Jiang, or in English, the four celestial animals. The four celestial animals are the azure dragon of the east, the vermilion bird of the south, the white tiger of the west, and the black tortoise, also called the black warrior of the north. The earliest known depictions of these four symbols were believed to date as far back as 5300 BCE, where they decorated the walls of a tomb in a mosaic made from clamshells and bones. By representing two of the four parts of these mythical legendary creatures, dragon turtles are said to symbolize courage, determination, fertility, longevity, power, and success, and they were regularly carved into elaborate stone monuments, where a whiskery, lion-like dragon head snaked out from beneath a turtle or tortoise shell as it stares up to the sky. 
However, far from the noble virtues ascribed to them in Chinese mythology, the dragon turtles of D&D are greedy hoarders of treasure, just like their true dragon cousins, often sinking ships with valuable cargo, picking through wrecks or caverns belonging to marine civilizations or other giant monsters, blasting them to oblivion with their flesh-meltingly blistering steam breath, only to move in and rake through the spoils of their victory. They're said to be neutral creatures, despite their motivations being clearly dominated by the pursuit of mindless acquisition and of personal wealth, and this, I would imagine, is because they hold no favourites and it is noted in almost all editions that they are fans of a good bribe or two. Dragon turtles are no more or less intelligent than the average mortal humanoid, but they are horrifyingly destructive and incredibly difficult to kill due to their draconic scales and even tougher shell which grants them a 20 AC. They use these very considerable bargaining chips, along with their ability to speak either aquan or draconic, to offer themselves as mercenaries the highest bidder, or to demand tributes of treasure in exchange for not sinking ships, like a 30-foot-long highwayman or a school bully who wants your lunch money. If a fitting tribute is offered, dragon turtles will swallow whatever treasure you offer and store them in their powerful stomachs for later regurgitation when they return to whatever treasure hoard they have carved out for themselves or stolen from other nearby creatures. They are gargantuan dragons, who are challenge rating 17 creatures. Alongside their unsettlingly powerful natural armour, they are resistant to fire damage and have 22 d20 plus 110 HP. They can breathe both air and water. They have a bite, claw and tail attack, all of which make up a fairly customizable multi-attack, which can include most parts of any of these in any combination. The massive jaws of this thing deal 3d12 plus 7 piercing damage, each claw deals 2d8 plus 7, and the tail deals the same damage as the bite, but in bludgeoning damage, and is mostly used to knock people away if they fail a strength saving throw, or to push them into the depths of the water if they are unlucky enough to fight this thing in its home turf. Deadliest of all is its steam breath attack, which, just like most breath weapons, has a recharge. A DM needs to roll a d6 at the start of each of its turns, and on a 5 or a 6, after it's expended its first use, the dragon regains its ability to breathe this attack. We're told that the dragon turtle exhales a scalding blast of steam in a 60-foot cone originating from its mouth, and each creature in that area needs to make a constitution saving throw or take 15 d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one and being underwater does not grant resistance for this damage as it usually would with fire truly the only thing that can really save you from a dragon turtle is a the ability to fly which thankfully these creatures can no longer do or perhaps to run away from it they only have a 20 foot movement speed and a 40-foot swim speed despite being massive aquatic predators. There are plenty of sea-based creatures who can swim a lot faster than this. Even sea elves and tritons, when they get into the water, if they use a dash as their main action, will be able to outswim this thing, although that does make it just more of a terrifying threat as it looms behind you waiting for you to do anything other than dash away from it. So it's certainly worth maybe just having a lot of treasure on hand so that you can barter with this thing rather than having to fight it. Now in terms of how I wanted to make this thing look, I mean obviously it is a dragon turtle. I wanted to make sure that turtle was a very significant part of this. So I wanted to borrow a colour scheme and a general impression, a general silhouette from a sea turtle. I wanted to make sure that I had these kind of long wing-like arms that it could use for swimming to tie itself back to its other six-limb draconic ancestry. I really wanted to make sure that I had some kind of essence of the Chinese mythological dragon in there, so I made sure to give it a very long tail and a very long neck, as depictions of this creature were one to have. I was intending as well to give this kind of more of a Chinese dragon head. They generally tend to have a kind of more dog-like head with a lot of whiskers and hair, but that seemed like a structural weak point for this otherwise swimming tank, a living submarine. And I wanted to give it something vicious, but not overplayed. The snapping turtle head has been something that a lot of artists have used to depict this creature, and it is perfect for the ferocity of this creature. But I wanted to make sure that I had something tank-like, something to emphasize the defensibleness of this creature, that my players would know immediately upon seeing this that there is no conceivable easy weak spot on this creature. And so I was drawn to a prehistoric fish that had an armoured bone-like, shell-like head structure that I thought would fit this thing's massive spiked shell very easily, a creature known as Dunkleostus. 
an absolutely terrifying fish whose teeth were a part of its massive exoskeleton that covered its entire head. It has a really, really terrifying face, and I thought that seemed perfect for a dragon turtle, so I decided to go with that instead, and I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It looks like it fits with some kind of terrifying, man-eating, ship-eating, draconic sea turtle. So I hope you enjoyed my interpretation as well, and if you did, please make sure to leave a little like down below, perhaps favourite this video, and share it with the rest of your community, the rest of your D&D party, or maybe your friends, if they don't fit into those categories. I hope they do, but I'm rambling. Anyway, any support that you can give really, really helps this channel, and I really appreciate that. So, if you do leave a little like, it'll only let YouTube know if I'm doing a good job, which hopefully I am. If you want to support the channel in a more personal way, and you really enjoyed this particular illustration and you'd like a copy for yourself, then I'll make sure to leave a link to my Patreon page down in the description box. Patrons at the Monster Monday pledge level get every single illustration that I do each month. So those of you who back during this month will get a copy of this illustration alongside all the other dragons that I do for Dragon December in January. We've got a lovely little community growing over there, so hopefully I'll see you there. But if not, I'm just very glad that you joined me today. As a reminder, this is Dragon December, where I'm drawing two dragons. I'm making two videos every single week on Mondays and Fridays. So I hope you won't miss out on Friday's video where I talk about the terrifying brain stealer dragon. And I hope that your December is going very well. We've nearly made it to the end of 2020, guys. We can do this. Let's give it a big send off with a lot of dragons. But until I next hear from you, happy monster hunting.